We are very privileged to have films at the Cannes Film Festival. We have two films this year. One is the film Wildlife, which is based on a Richard Ford novel, 1960, and the other is a local Missoula picture. And that picture is named Rainmaker, and it is produced and acted and written by Catherine Cronin, who grew up outside of Missoula. All right. Now, tell me a little bit about these two films. Well, Rainmaker is a very personal exploration of some events in Catherine's world, and she has translated them into film, and I think she's done a beautiful job of taking the things that you want to process in your mind and get out and turn them into a visual representation. And I think it's a really powerful piece about how mothers and daughters interact. And Wildlife takes that a little bit farther because it's a also a powerful piece with Carey Mulligan and Jake Gyllenhaal. And it's about their 14-year-old son. And through the eyes of him, he watches their relationship kind of crack apart. Um, the father loses his job, there's a forest fire, and his mother begins to realize that the life that she has is not necessarily the life she, that she wants. Finding a life that she wants, of course, turns out to be the crucial hinge in the film. Gotcha. Now, the, the, both these are going to be shown at the Cannes Film Festival, and when is that? The okay. Cannes Film Festival runs during the second and third weeks of May, and they have different events that happen, you know, in one week and the other. There's Cannes Critic Week. There's a film market. Uh, many of the exclusive film production houses rent yachts and houses and hotel lobbies. And there are thousands of films being shown and marketed and distributed from all over the world. And when will we know if e and either of these films has been uh, nominated for an award? You usually start hearing the buzz on the films about three quarters of the way through the festival, and they keep the schedule pretty tight until just before the festival starts. And then they do a, every day, they do a daily news update, and you'll start to see all the photos from the Crozet and the red carpet, and it'll be, it's always very interesting. I really enjoyed it the last time I was there. I was going to ask, are you going to go and represent the, uh, the film office? I am not going to go this year, but Catherine is going to be a fantastic representative for us. I was there with uh, a few years ago with the film uh, Jimmy P, which filmed up in the Browning area on the Blackfoot Indian Reservation. Terrific. All right, that's just what I needed. Thank you so much. Absolutely. I hope you got what you wanted. You bet. And, and, and uh, by the way, yeah. Kath Catherine's going to send me some photos of her oh, good. And, and the girl who plays her daughter on the set, things like that, that I can use on our website. So. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, go for it. Her um, her father is a producer and uh, production manager. He did things like Heat and Bad Boys and wow. things like that. And uh, did Catherine tell you um, her grandmother is uh, Jessica Tandy and Hume Cronin? Seriously? How exciting yes. is that? Oh, my goodness. Yes. What a yeah, boy, I'll tell you what. She's, she's pretty modest. But, yeah, Chris's mother is uh, Jessica Tandy. His parents are Jessica Tandy and Hume Cronin. Yeah. Gracious So it's me. a very veteran, veteran, highly acclaimed. Boy, actors, I guess that Jessica actresses. Tandy is an Oscar Oscar winner, right? Oh yes, absolutely. And they also uh they both won a lifetime achievement Tony Award and they um also uh received Emmys and oh yeah, I think their stage career spanned over sixty five years. Wow. Now but both of them have passed. Yeah. Was that right? Both of them both of them have passed. I just yeah. died of ovarian cancer in the nineties and Hume I think died in the early two thousand, some two thousand three, I think. Um and Chris, I had the pleasure, I've, I've worked with Chris a, a number of times, but I had the pleasure of working with him on an Alex and Andrew film called uh, The Slaughter Roll, which was filmed at Great Falls. So Chris has worked, her father has worked, you know, worldwide on, you know, tons of projects. And so he's uh, right up there with our, our very esteemed group of motion picture makers that live here in Montana. And people would never know, would they? <laughs> no, you would never know. You right. would, if you met either one of them on the street, you would never know. Right. And and quite frankly, I'm the one that 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 uh 
um, that promotes them like that. I'm like, hey, you should know Chris. He's, <laughs> he knows Hollywood backwards and forwards. No, and they're, they, and Chris is a great person, and, and Catherine is just lovely and fantastic. I am originally from Montana, uh, raised there, from, uh, actually in Missoula. Um, my dad, though, is in the film, in, film industry as well. So I've kind of always known that that's what I was going to do. And this film uh, was a collaboration between the two of us. So I wrote it and we co-produced it together, uh, my dad and I. Um, And we both live in, well, he lives in Montana full time. I live in Los Angeles full time, but um, we're both Montana, Montana people. So now here we are. We're going to Cannes Film Festival, which is in two weeks. Um, The film will also be at the Petit Cannes, which is, basically once you apply to get into the Cannes Film Festival, if you have been accepted, then you are also eligible to apply for Le Petit Cannes, which showcases what they consider to be the top, let's say, 100 films. Could you, um, could so you, we're also going to be in that as well. Would you kindly spell that for me? Yes. Le Petit Cannes is L-E space P-E-T-I-T space C-A-N-N-E-S. Gotcha. The, the mini can, basically. Got it. Okay. Exactly. All right. Yeah. So tell me about what's the name of your film and what's it about? Uh, it's called Rainmaker, which is one word. Um, and it's about eating disorders. So it's a comedy. Just kidding. It's definitely not. It's a drama. Um, but it's about two women in the same family dealing with eating, eating disorders. The, the lead character, who was actually played by myself, um, she is dealing with kind of a demonic entity which represents the illness, and she kind of has to choose between that entity, which is both, you know, frightening but also seductive, when she realizes that there's an implication for her daughter, and her daughter's six years old. Um, so it kind of deals with that multi generational aspect of mental illness. And so, uh, and you know, do we, do we, you know, do we, pick up mental illness because we watch our parents or is it something that is genetically passed on? Um, it kind of plays with those ideas. With, without giving too much away, uh, is, is, there, is there a positive outcome or is it, uh, uh, what, like I say, without giving anything away? Sure. It's, I would say it's cautiously optimistic. <laughs> okay. And who, who stars in it with you? Um, the young actress playing my daughter, her name is Kira Bennett. It's K-I-R-A. Bennett is B-E-N-N-E-T-T. And um, the gentleman who plays kind of the demonic entity, he's actually in almost full prosthetic makeup the entire time, so he's almost unrecognizable. But his name is Craig Ng. Craig, C-R-A-I-G. Ng is N-G. All right. Now, when you say this this entity, what kind of things does this entity do to try to influence you and and your daughter? <clears throat> it's it's a pretty complicated relationship to the disease. You know, it's not just at least in the mind of someone who has something like this. It's not just a bad thing. You know, it's not a bad thing. It's just who you are. So it can be have elements of you know being lethal, but it's also very very seductive, and it's comforting and i mean the best way i can describe it for an adult is like a lover a lover that's not very good for you um but i think that most people understand that kind of relationship of loving someone very dearly and wanting to be with them and knowing that they're bad for you sure so and that's kind of the same uh relationship that the mother has with the entity of course for a child it's much different it's more of an imaginary friend sure who's there with you all the time and who you love is, is there a message that you're trying to get across with this film? When people are done and they stand up to leave, what do you want them to take with them? Um, I really hope that it can serve as, let me try to phrase this in a good way, um, just an insight into what it's like to have a disease like that. It's a very misunderstood disease. It's very... Um, you know, people generally think that if you have an eating disorder, you're superficial or you're vain or you're trying to attain some standard of beauty that doesn't exist. And that's not what it's about. Um, it goes much deeper than that. So I'm really hoping to give people just an open doorway into what it may be like for someone who is suffering. Perfect. Now, I want to stop my tape, and now I have a big favor to ask of you. For, yeah, was uh, shot uh, go, in go, go, around Missoula. If you could start again, just uh, you, the entire yeah. film, what now? 
the entire film was shot in and around Missoula. Um, and I would say 70% of our crew was local. So, I mean, it was amazing. We, the Montana Film Commission, um, they were phenomenal. They got us hooked up with some great locations with some amazing crew. Um, I mean, they really kind of carried the project from start to finish. And I, I look forward to shooting there again.